Fellas, I hope you guys are doing well and still enjoying this wonderful game that we all play. I'm personally still on my mission of making a video for a variety of different content pieces, and today I wanted to talk about Temporos. I did a little poll in my community tab to find out which scaling boss you guys enjoyed the most, and I was actually pretty surprised that Temporos was more popular than Wintertod. But let me say, I get it. Temporos is like the big brother to Wintertod. It's what Winter Todd could be, if it was a little less annoying. I've got a little bit of Temporos experience, so I figured I should share some information with you. I did this pet grind, and I got to pet around 4,000 permits, so I did get pretty lucky, but that's still a fair bit of Temporos. So let's talk about why Temporos is good, why it's bad, and even how I did it. Overall, I would say Temporos is pretty good. As a skilling activity, I think it's fantastic, but what brings it down from a perfect activity for me is the rewards. They're pretty weak. We can agree to disagree here, but I think most people are actively doing Temporos for only one thing, the fish barrel. This thing is awesome. It extends each of your fishing trips by a full inventory, making regular fishing much more AFK, profit, and XP per trip. But the other rewards from Temporos? Spirit Flakes are okay? I personally like when minigames have a token like this, but these also have some additional use. If you bring Spirit Flakes on your fishing trip, they will give you a 50% chance to double your catch, which can be useful in a lot of situations, but they don't give you XP for the second fish caught, so they greatly shorten your trip time for less XP. I think their main purpose is used to upgrade the angler set, but even when you upgrade the angler set, it only adds benefit inside the minigame itself. Spirit Flakes can also be spent on a pet recolor for the Heron, so it's just some cool minor stuff, but nothing really that exciting. Another reward you could get is the Tackle Box. This will let you hold all your fishing supplies, but you can't actually use any of the items when they're in the Tackle Box, and when you fish, you typically don't need to bring any other tools that you don't use, so I really don't see its purpose. I mean, I can kind of get it if you're like dire for bank space, but bank space has really been fixed in recent years and you should have ample amounts. I can see this maybe having some niche use benefit for UIM, but it seems kind of useless overall. You can also get the Tome of Water and Soak pages from here, but I'm going to be honest and I'm kind of asking a question here. Does this have any practical use? Like, that's not even a joke. I don't think you choose this one over the Tome of Fire in any PVM or skilling situation, but if it does have some weird niche skilling use or something, can you let me know in the comments? Because I have really never seen a purpose for this, and I think it's exemplified through the price of it. It's currently selling for about one third the price of a Tome of Fire, so I think it's just kind of something that you'd get along the way, almost by accident. You can also get the Big Harpoon Fish. This is pretty much just a collection log slot. You can currently mount it in your POH, but let's be honest, has anyone ever mounted anything outside of a KQ head for the Dire? Maybe in the future we'll be able to add this to our ships with sailing, or even our aquariums with player-owned aquariums. But as of right now, it really doesn't have any use. The only other unique rewards from here is that you have the chance of pulling a Dragon Harpoon, but that drop rate is the exact same as the pet. 1 in 8,000. A Dragon Harpoon is great for your account overall, but if you're a main account, you should just buy one from the GE, and if you're an Iron Man, it's probably faster to just get one from Worms when on Slayer Task. And while we're still talking about these super rare drops, I think the pet is cool. It's unique, it's different, I think the boss itself has an awesome design, but I personally don't like pets that look like they're coming from a portal or underground but maybe you do, so maybe this is a reason why you want to do this activity. And those are only the unique drops. You'll get a ton of standard loot as you go. To be honest, the standard loot is terrible, for main accounts that is. This is not a bad way for Iron Men, and maybe more specifically Ultimate Iron Men, to get large quantities of noted raw fish with zero risk. The average loot from one reward permit is 2.7k at level 35 fishing, and it flies all the way up to 3.6k at 81 fishing or above. If you want to do Temporos, it shouldn't be for money, which I think is fine. It should be more about the XP, since you are skilling after all. And now that we've talked about the rewards, let's talk about actually doing the boss. One thing I really like about Temporos is that there is a variety of different ways you can tackle it, and each way will benefit you accordingly. You can focus on getting permits, focus on getting XP, or even do a mix of both. 
Temporos can also be done in small or large groups or completely solo. I personally think Temporos is much better solo since you have complete control of the encounter and you really don't have to worry about stragglers or people trolling. But if you do decide to use the mass worlds, you kind of have two options that basically boil down to cooking or not cooking. If you cook your fish, you'll get more reward points overall, which leads to more reward pools. And if you don't cook your fish, you'll get more XP overall, but less reward pools. These solo methods for this boss have a lot more variation to them. You can do the firefighting method, which involves getting Temporos to a point where you'll no longer be attacked by the boss since you've lowered his energy enough. And then you can start using your buckets to put out all the fires across the island to maximize your permits. But my personal favorite method ended up being just a standard cooking method, which involves some specific timing and fish counts. But by doing this method, you don't have to closely manage how many fish you've put in each cannon. That did not even sound like an English sentence, so let me explain a little bit more. This method involves cooking all fish caught and keeping Temporos at low energy to prevent special attacks. This method can get you roughly 72,000 fishing XP per hour, but to be honest, this really depends on your current fishing level and gear. I'll throw a little XP chart up on the screen so you can see where you would settle, but in my honest opinion, even though the Crystal Harpoon gives you the most XP, I found that using an Infernal Harpoon here was the most chill and most enjoyable. But outside of experience, the permits for this method were pretty consistent and should be consistent for all levels, letting you earn about 55 to 60 permits per hour. With this method, the only information you really need to know is where the 7th spot in your inventory is, where the 17th spot is, and where the 19th spot is. You can make this really easy by using runelight screen markers, or honestly, just counting. Before you start the game, make sure you have 4 buckets in your inventory, your harpoon equipped or in your inventory, and you may want to consider bringing a hammer depending on your fishing level and which harpoon you're bringing. Once the game starts, run off the boat onto the island and begin fishing at the closest fishing spot. Here you want to catch 7 to 10 fish. If you're using an infernal harpoon, I typically go for 10 because half of them will be cooked already. Once you've got your fish, run over and begin cooking them on the shrine. As soon as you see that double fishing spot appear, run to it as fast as possible. If you're using rune light, this will be highlighted in a different color. For me, it's green. But if you're on the vanilla client or on mobile, it will be the spot where the fish is jumping out of the water. You want to try to get to 17 fish at this point in time. If you have 17 fish in your inventory, start cooking them. If you don't have 17 yet and the wave attack happens, you need to run to the totem pole and tether right away. This is a great time to say that if you don't have the Spirit Angler outfit, you will need to bring a rope with you. The Spirit Angler works as a rope. That is its upgraded benefit. But if you don't have this, bring the rope because this step is mandatory. Getting hit by a wave will mess up the timing of this method, so it's very important that you do this. If the totem pole breaks after you've used it, you can fix it with your hammer for construction XP, but you won't need to fix it as this attack will only happen once. Now that you have your 17 fish, make sure all of them are cooked. Run up to the ship and dump all 17 in. While you're doing this, the storm will move in. This can happen either before you make it up to the ship or after. It doesn't really matter, you just need to manage it when you can. The storm will spawn 4 fires and ideally you want to put them out before they spread. Once you've put your fish in and doused all the fires, you can drop your buckets. This attack will not happen again. At this point, you're in the chill part of this method. Catch 19 more fish, and then cook them all. Once they're all cooked, load them into the cannon. You want to make sure you do this as quickly as possible. The timing can be kind of tight for this first round, but at this point in time, Temporos will no longer attack you. So it's just managing the storm intensity, and the storm intensity can be interesting. If you're cooking your 19 fish and the storm intensity reaches about 92 or 93%, you need to abandon what you're doing and put your fish into the cannon. In a normal run, this won't really happen. You should be getting up there around 70 to 80%, but if you're behind for whatever reason, just set Temporos into his next phase and then catch up afterwards. Once Temporos goes into his vulnerable stage, you need to run down to the dock and harpoon him until he's about 60% health. Getting him to 60% should let you leave before he's no longer vulnerable. If you need to catch more fish to make up the 19 from the first round, Temporos may attack again, meaning an additional wave might come and you'll need to tether to the totem pole, which 
if it's broken is bad news, but again, you can always bring a hammer just to be safe. And if you're someone using a regular harpoon, the Imkando hammer is an equipable version and requires no extra inventory space, so I highly recommend it. But at this point in time, you're just repeating this cycle of adding 19 fish, damaging Temporos until you can't it anymore, and then doing it again. Fish, cook, and load another 19 fish. Then go and attack Temporos for as long as possible, and on this next trip, fish, cook, and load as many fish as you can for maximum permits. Sometimes doing 28 here can be a little bit sketchy. You might not be able to do enough damage depending on how much you've done in the previous two. There is no exact number here, but I would say doing 26 fish is more safe. You're probably seeing an example on screen where I did 28 fish and I couldn't get the Temporos kill before the storm took over. So this is just kind of finding the number that works for you. Again, my recommendation is about 26. For a long portion of this grind, I didn't drop my buckets. So I was doing about 24 every trip, but when the boss is dead, if you did drop your buckets, take four more from the dock and fill them with water and get ready to go again. This method becomes a very simple cycle once you get into it, and it makes the boss very enjoyable long term, in my opinion at least. I really think Temporost is worth doing. If you're someone who wants a different fishing experience, this is not a bad option. It's not as AFK as Karambwans, but it is a pretty good XP option. Plus you have the chance to snag a super cool pet, so this one would get the seal of approval from me. Honestly, I'd give Temporos an 8 out of 10. It's not higher because the physical rewards are pretty bad. The XP is great, but getting 13 bass at 99 fishing is pretty depressing. But yeah, that's my video on Temporos. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Shout out to the big fella, Dan Smeged. And as always, shout out to the fellas, Snacks, Jujo, and Italk. I'm gonna be honest, I ran that poll because I already wrote a video for Winter Todd, so we can do that one in the future, but I am surprised how many people actually enjoy Zolcano. Zolcano is the one on this list that I really didn't try that much, but I do want to do the pet grind in the future, so if you have some interest in a Winter Todd or a Zolcano video in the future, please let me know. I'd love to make those and I'm very excited to try Zolcano. If Temporos is really not your thing, you should see a video on screen now about AFK and Karambwans, but other than that, I've got nothing left to say. So I'll see you in the next one.